Kaboom! It didn't bounce. Give it 300 years more practice. You might stand a chance. <laughs> On October 25, 1967, Taiyo Matsumoto was born. He grew up in Tokyo, and his mother, Naoko Kudo, was a poet. However, he didn't have a typical upbringing, spending most of his elementary school years in a foster home before moving in with relatives in middle school. And it didn't take him long to adjust to life outside of foster care. I couldn't wait to get out, so I was really happy when I finally did. I wasn't sad. All I'd wanted for all that time was to be a normal kid, so I was overjoyed, really. He'd always been into manga. Growing up, he not only liked reading it, specifically citing mangaka like Osama Tezuka and Jotaro Ishinomori, but drawing it as well. However, his primary focus was actually playing soccer. He played from his second year of elementary school until his third year of high school. He had dreams of playing professionally, but the seeds of doubt were planted in middle school. I wanted to be a professional soccer player and I was practicing super hard, but then in the middle of that match in 8th grade we were getting whooped and I said to myself, I'm going to have to change direction here. I realized during the first half that soccer wasn't going to be viable, and I was seriously racking my brain during halftime about what I was going to do instead. My father used to say what I wanted was something to apply myself to, and he's right. It's a comforting thing for me. I had a cousin who was always saying he was going to become a manga artist, and so I gradually came around to the idea too. Although he didn't think he was very good, he did serve as the captain of his high school team. Side note, the cousin who he was referring to was Inui Santa, the creator of Tokyo Tribes. While it wasn't his primary focus at the time, his high school years would provide him with crucial inspiration for his future career. One day, his mother gave him a copy of Katsushiro Otomu's Domu, a science fiction manga from the early 1980s. He became a fan of Otomu's after reading it, and has reread it countless times by now. Yes, I've always felt I wanted to be like Otomu-san. I still do, in fact. Otomu's work was completely different. It looked cool, but there was more than that. It was like the pictures were moving, and the dialogue had a naturalistic feel to it. It wasn't the manga world. It was closer to the real world. I must have read it hundreds of times by now. I think that everyone was enthralled to Otomu. People talk about the before Otomu and after Otomu eras. There are all kinds of artists now, but I don't think you get so many people using the kinds of techniques I saw in the manga I read as a child. After graduating high school, he decided to attend Wako University, a small private college in Tokyo. It was at this point that he started taking manga more seriously. When looking through a list of clubs at the university, he saw a drawing from the manga study club and decided to join. But as mentioned earlier, he spent most of his time growing up focused on soccer, so he had a lot to learn. Up to that point, I was definitely a physical type. When I asked the other club members when we started practicing, I was told there was no such thing as practice. At the time, I had absolutely no knowledge of how to create comics, not even about toning. I had to be taught the basics, like not drawing on both sides of the paper. During his time at the club, he drew his first manga, which was about a gorilla who became a bicycle racer. At the age of 19, he started traveling to other countries. His first stop was Thailand, in order to write a manga report about kickboxing for the university's kickboxing magazine. Shortly after his trip, he decided to submit something that he was working on into a manga contest. This contest was the Afternoon Four Seasons Award, a new manga artist award sponsored by Kodansha's monthly afternoon magazine, which is the sister magazine to Morning or Comic Morning. The reason Matsumoto decided to submit his manga to this magazine was because he was a big fan of one of their mangaka, Seiki Sushida. The manga he submitted was called Straight, and it's a manga about baseball. He didn't end up winning it, but he was awarded a runner-up prize, and Straight was serialized in the Afternoon Season Special Edition issue and Morning Magazine in 1988, making his official debut. Side note, even though both the contest submission and his publishing debut were both called Straight, they weren't the same stories. While both focused on baseball, the contest entry was about a 45-year-old pitcher, but his editors told him to change the main character into a young man. After his debut, he decided to drop out of school and quit his part-time job, even if he would come to eventually regret it. Straight would only run for two volumes in the morning before it was cancelled. Not only that, but being able to compare himself to other professionals made him realize how far he still had to go. I submitted to them because I wanted to be like Seiki Sushida, or maybe it's more like I consider my manga to be Sushida-esque, but something about seeing my manga there in the magazine allowed me to see how ugly the art was, and I was just gobsmacked. It was fun though. After Straight was discontinued, Matsumoto began traveling again. At the age of 22, he attended the 1989 Paris Dakar rally in order to write a story about it, but he wasn't too interested in the race itself and spent a lot of his time in bookstores in France. This was the first time he experienced European comics, and it would have a large impact on his drawing style. That was my first exposure to European comics, and it had a big effect on me. It still does. It was like looking into a different world. There was Miguelado Prado, a Spanish writer, Inky Belisle, and Mobius. They all had a huge influence on me. I can't read French, so I was only looking at the pictures, but it was a style of drawing I hadn't seen before. 
The only thing he released since Straight was cancelled was a series of short stories called Car and Earth, which was also released in Morning Magazine in 1990. The story follows two guys in their sentient car as they participate in the Paris Dakar rally. He would get another opportunity soon, but it wouldn't be in Morning Magazine. He made the move to Shogaku Khan's Big Comic Spirits. It came after the series I was doing for Morning flopped, and my current editor, Hori, invited me over to Big Comic Spirits and told me to do a boxing manga. So me and Issei Fuku got together and started hashing out how to go about it. And basically we decided that we do the standard, scrappy, smart aleck takes up boxing kind of story. But first, we'd never seen a Shito no Joe before, so we watched the whole show on VHS and we both just went really quiet. We saw immediately that it had all been done before and knew we couldn't make the protagonist a young man anymore. So we decided that we start with a world champion at age 30 who's starting to decline. I remember Hori being decidedly unenthused about the idea. I didn't know much about boxing. I loved the manga Ganbare Genki and I'd read it about a hundred times and I'd gone into a boxing gym before, though I immediately stopped going. And that was about it. I hadn't watched the Shijin no Joe before because I had this image of it being a manga about poverty, but it turned out to be really cool. Of course, comparing myself to Iki Kajiwara and Tetsuya Chiba back when I was just a scrub who knew nothing about manga was pretty presumptuous of me. Side note, Issei Yafuku was an older member of Waka University's manga study club, and he had helped Matsumoto as his assistant since he debuted. The two would eventually become partners, the Fuku writing the stories and Matsumoto handling the art. This boxing manga was called Zero, and it ran in big comic spirits from 1990 to 1991, and it was released in two volumes. There was also a shift in the style of his artwork from Straight to Zero, and he said that may have been the result of being influenced by the comics that he read in France. After Flower Man finished his run in big comic spirits in 1992, Matsumoto would release what some people still call his best work, Tekken Concrete, or Black and White in Western markets. The story follows two kids, Kuro, or Black, and Chiro, White, in their battle for control of Takaramachi, or Treasure Town. The title of the series, Tekken Concrete, was based on a childhood mispronunciation. Growing up, Matsumoto couldn't pronounce Tekken Concrete, or reinforced concrete, and would say Tekken Concrete. The manga represents a distorted view of childhood, a world that Matsumoto used to dream of as a kid. It ran in big comic spirits from 1993 to 1994 and was eventually released in three volumes. But that wasn't the original plan. While Tekken Concrete is remembered fondly, a lot of the love that it received was in retrospect. At the time it was being printed, it actually wasn't popular at all. And because of this, changes had to be made in order to finish it. The two major concessions were the series' length and the number of action sequences. I think I was seeing it like an animation, yes. I was hardly sleeping when I wrote that. I was having to do it as a weekly serial, so I hardly remember doing any of it. The series wasn't very popular either, so they wanted to wrap things up. I'd originally planned to do five volumes, but it ended up having to be three. Action sequences take up a lot of pages, so I was thinking about how many of those scenes I could actually include. Those all take up space too, and since I knew I'd be finishing at volume 3, I had to think hard about how much I'd be able to fit in. It wasn't about artistic concerns, it was about calculating pages. In October of 1995, the year after Tekken Concrete concluded, Taiyo Matsumoto sat down with Tokyo Cool, a fan site, for an interview. One of the things discussed was his love for action in manga, specifically in sports. I like comics with action, especially in a serialized comic. Specifically, I prefer to draw sports stories where the action can be depicted more naturally, as compared to something like a gangster action comic. Another reason I prefer to draw sports comics is that I enjoy the little details that belong to sports, like a catcher's mitt or the number on a player's back in a baseball manga. They also discussed what he was currently working on. The next material that I'm interested in is table tennis. I'd like to do a high school version of the Shinsengumi in Ryotaro Shiba's Moyoken, or Burn O Sword a historical novel where a group of samurai called the Shinsengumi have risen to protect the emperor towards the end of the Edo period. There is already Minoru Furia's Go Ina Junior High Table Tennis Club. Whenever I mention that I want to do a table tennis manga next, I'm always reminded of that. What I'm going to do is a story with a main character who is a genius. I've been researching and the series will appear serially in Big Comic Spirits magazine. Why did he decide to focus on ping pong? At the time, he watched all kinds of sports, and one day, he stumbled across ping pong and was intrigued. When I saw ping pong, I thought, cool, I wanted to depict the movements of the players. I also thought it was interesting that even though most people knew about this sport, there were many things I didn't know about it, such as the fact that there were different fighting styles, and that all the players were very sensitive to the rubber. He wanted to create something that felt like noir, which he thought was falling out of fashion for reasons that he couldn't understand. I was trying to make ping pong into something in the Shiburus Yakuza, or Ninkyo, vein or something. I think this is true of all teenage boys, but I loved anything noir, and Otomu's early work was really noir, right? So that sort of manga was what inspired me to become a manga artist myself. But then the bubble happened, and people were out dancing at discotheques or whatever, and noir suddenly went out of vogue, and I couldn't see why. So I created Ping Pong really wanted to do something really noir, I think. When it comes to the characters, Taiyo Matsumoto likes to pick names that reflect each character's personality. For instance, for Tsukimoto in Ping Pong, Tsuki means moon, and he's a somewhat moody character. For Hoshino, Hoshi means star, 
and he's a character who shines. A real star, in fact. I choose the name of my character so that their personality is easily understandable. There are other examples that are rather obvious for Japanese readers. When he was writing the story, he created milestones to reach and set goals for himself, and after all the research, writing, and drawing, Ping Pong debuted in Big Comic Spirits in 1996 in the 14th issue. It ran for 55 chapters, with the final one being released in 1997 in issue number 29. The series was released in five volumes by Shogakukan. Volume 1 was released on September 1st, 1996, and Volume 5 concluded the series on October 1st, 1997. Unlike Tekken Concrete, it didn't take people very long to warm up to Ping Pong. It was nominated for the Tezuka Osomu Cultural Prize in both 1997 and 1998, finishing 4th in 97 and 3rd in 98. Side note, some of you may be wondering why Tayo Matsumoto hasn't written a manga about soccer yet. He clearly likes drawing sports manga, so why hasn't he drawn one based on the sport that he played for most of his life? Well, it's not because he hadn't thought of it. He just didn't think it would work. Actually, it was initially proposed before Ping Pong. I was already working on the plot, but in a soccer manga, you need 22 characters to play one game, and it's not possible to have four characters and throw the rest away. I guess I could do it if the manga were 20 or 30 volumes, but my serialization probably wouldn't be long enough. So I suddenly decided to stop doing soccer comics because I wanted to focus on individual sports. After the conclusion of Ping Pong, Matsumoto didn't know what to do next. When I did Ping Pong, I really felt like I'd done a good job of expressing what I wanted to say, and it received the right reaction from people. People got it. But the thing is, while I wanted to keep drawing manga, I didn't have many things that I wanted to say. And so even though the time had come to move on to something new, I still didn't know what. It was around this time that he came to a realization. He didn't enjoy coming up with stories like he used to. This feeling really set in when he was working on his next major release, Go Go Monster, a one volume 450 page manga published by Shugaku-kan on October 23rd, 2000. I started feeling that I was bored with my own stories after Ping Pong when I did Go Go Monster. Somewhere around ping pong, I kind of stopped being able to enjoy coming up with my own stories. Like I'd lost interest in seeing what I would draw next or something. I'm not sure why it is. Like, if I were doing a story in which character A and character B were going to fight, I used to get really drawn into wondering who would win. But somewhere along the line, I lost all interest in that. I mean, characters A and B are just my creations anyway. I could easily kill A off if I wanted to, or I could throw character C into the mix, or whatever. It's all under my control, and I just got sick of the way I did things and seeing the characters repeatedly do the same things, to the point that I stopped even reading my own work. I used to be the kind of artist who could read his own work a hundred times and still enjoy it, but it got so that I couldn't even bring myself to eat the vegetables I was growing on my own farm, metaphorically speaking. This feeling formed the base of the partnership with Issei Yufuku that I mentioned earlier. He asked Yufuku if he would write stories for him back when he was still working on Ping Pong, but it wouldn't all come together until 2006 when the two of them would release Takemitsu Samurai, or Bamboo Sword Samurai, in Big Comic Spirits. This partnership would continue until the end of the manga's run in 2010, the same year that he would release his next big project, one that he decided to write and illustrate himself, Sunny. Side note, jumping back to the year 2000, alongside Gogo -Go Monster, number 5 was released in Shugaku Khan CNN Magazine Monthly Iki. It ran from November 30th, 2000 to January 25th, 2005, and was eventually released in 8 volumes. In 2001, it was announced that a live-action adaptation of Ping Pong was in production. And the next year, on July 20, 2002, it made its theatrical debut. Like the manga it was based on, it was very well received. It was nominated for eight awards at the 26th Japan Academy Film Prize in 2003, and it made over a billion yen at the box office. There were some differences between it and the original manga. Those included an original character, additional scenes, and a cameo appearance from Taiyo Matsumoto. On January 16, 2014, an anime adaptation of Ping Pong was announced. It would air on Noitamina, a late-night anime programming block on Fuji TV, and it would be directed by Masaki Yuasa. They also released a 30-second promotional video alongside the announcement. Interestingly enough, Masaki Yuasa was a fan of both Taiyo Matsumoto and Ping Pong well before he started working on this project. He read Ping Pong while it was being serialized and was impressed by the quality of the artwork. That being said, initially, he was confused when he was approached about directing the adaptation. To be honest, I was at a loss at first. The original manga is 18 years old, and it had already been made into a live-action movie once. So I thought, you're going to do it again? But I wanted to do a big title, and as I worked on it, I later became convinced that I wanted to make it now. One of the challenges of adapting Ping Pong was bringing it into the modern era, while still maintaining what made the original so great. Not only had the world changed a lot since the late 90s, but the game of Ping Pong had as well. The original work is so well done that I think it would be better not to change it so much. Even so, there are parts of me that think it would be meaningless if I didn't do it in a modern style, or as a modern drama. 
The original work was created in a way that fits perfectly with the way things were 18 years ago, so it's quite difficult to do that. For example, the environment for table tennis today is completely different than it was 18 years ago. In the original story, all pen holders used only one side of the pen, and the main character won the game by using the backside hitting method, which was a novel style at the time. But nowadays, the shake hand is the mainstream, and there is no one using the pen at all. So I will continue to include techniques that are used in table tennis today, so that people who play table tennis today will not just think, this is just an old story. In order to learn more about the sport, he went to watch live matches and tried to understand some of the nuances of the game. He wanted to present these elements of ping pong to the viewer in a way that's interesting and easy to understand. While the core of the story would remain the same, he wanted to expand on the original as well. There were several things Taiyo Matsumoto wanted to include in the original manga that had to be cut, and Yuasa was going to add some of those things back, while also adding his own interpretation to certain scenes. Matsumoto-san also said, It's a little disappointing that I couldn't draw something other than ping pong, so I thought it would be interesting to delve deeper in my own way and, without destroying the framework of the original story, depict the humanity of the high school students, or perhaps include romantic elements and a bit of a family atmosphere. I guess it's like a personal commentary. This must be what it's all about, or this must be what Matsumoto-san was thinking about. I met Matsumoto-san for the first time when we decided to make ping pong. At first he told me, I'm a fan of yours, so please make it as you like, Yuasa-san. Hearing that, I thought it would be okay to express my own personality as well. Yuasa started by working on the storyboards, using the original manga as a reference, and paying close attention to every frame. Sometimes he would even take frames exactly as they were in the original. Ping pong moves very fast. You don't have time to think too much, you have to keep moving. Also, if you read the original work, you can see that the rotation is this way and the bend is that way, and it's all drawn out perfectly. When you read it over, you make all kinds of discoveries. I incorporate these discoveries into the storyboards as I go along. This time, I drew all the storyboards. However, even though he was given the freedom to use his own judgment, he would still ask Matsumoto questions whenever he needed clarification. In the anime this time, I'm planning to depict the backstories of the characters that were not depicted in the original work. I was given some ideas that Matsumoto-san didn't use. I thought it would be interesting to include them in the anime, so I decided to do so. If Matsumoto-san said, this line would have been better, I would say, well, let's do that in the anime. It is a well-made work, but I think it would be great if we could present it in its current form. The anime's character designer was Nobutaka Ito, and his animation was handled by Tatsunoko Production and Science Saru. In order to properly animate all the nuances of ping pong, they used flash animation. They developed new digital animation techniques in order to perform slow motion sequences, pans, and zooms that would be difficult to do by hand. Similarly, in order to maintain the original style of the manga, they decided to make some interesting framing decisions, like using split screen shots. The medium of manga has its own expression of frames, such as how you can compare each frame to the one that came before it, and how multiple frames can make up one overall picture and I wanted to try my hand at doing that in the anime medium. Also, for this particular show, I wanted to use art from the original manga while preserving the exact same meaning it had there. In manga, you can switch angles whenever you want, so there were many cases where even if I wanted to use the material as is, it didn't follow the laws of video. Ping Pong the Animation aired on Noe Tamina for 11 episodes, from April 11, 2014 to June 20, 2014. Just like the manga and the live action movie before it, it was a critical success, taking home the Animation of the Year award in the 2015 Tokyo Anime Award Festival. In April 2014, Funimation announced it would be streaming the anime in Western markets, and later that year, on November 8, 2014, Funimation announced that they had acquired the home video rights to Ping Pong. The series was going to be released on Blu-ray and DVD in the summer of 2015 and would be released with an English dub. The series would hit store shelves in North America on June 23, 2015. The next year, the series would arrive in the UK via Anime Limited as a collector's edition on July 11, 2016. Funimation would re-release the series in North America as a part of the Save lineup on June 20, 2017. Funimation was originally going to release the series once more as a part of their new Essentials Blu-ray line, but it was ultimately cancelled. Ping Pong has been well regarded ever since it was first printed, and its acclaim has only grown with each additional adaptation. Ping Pong the Animation is one of the most well received sports anime ever, and I have a feeling that its unique style and compelling characters will continue to resonate with fans for many years to come.